Here's my 2018 update on my large uh, hexapod robot. Here it is in my workshop and sitting on a test stand. It's not totally complete right now. There's only three legs attached. The other three are in some various stages of uh, work. But this robot is designed around a modular concept. The body consists of uh, three different sections. The bottommost section down here is the battery supply. As you see in here there is one single battery in there. There's space for a second battery as needed. This is a 12 volt 26 amp hour battery actually. This right here is the power supply uh, panel turned on by a quick key switch and then right here is a uh, last uh, it's Alaska electronics pa uh, panel pilot uh, display unit which is being used to let me know what the motor voltage is I'll be adding another one for the computer voltage also there's also a couple switches here that control the motor this is actually activates turns on all the motor controllers themselves and also there is a, another switch down here for the computers I'm going to turn that all off. Here's the power distribution panel on the other side. This is for the uh, the computer and all the other electronics. It's got its own relay right here for the power distribution. A lot more distribution points. Right now I'm just using six and these are specifically for the six leg, uh, leg computers. And then down here is the uh, charging ports Right now only one of them is actually hooked up and this is the one for the main battery. But these are for additional add-ons in the future. The uh, other panels here are just basically decorative panels uh, keeping dust and dirt out. Everything is designed so that it's got lots of airflow through here. Uh, since this thing is mostly air-cooled, that helps with that. So that's the battery side of it. Moving up to the next section, this is the main body portion of it. Here we've got six panels, each of them containing three um, motor controllers, one for each leg uh, motor, and each leg motor has got three motors associated. We'll talk about the legs themselves in a minute. Uh, this is kind of a modular dis uh, setup where everything here is held in by four bolts and it unplugs from the other side. Leg would go and slide in here. As you can see, leg number one slides in here. This is a basically an item to catch the leg so it lines up properly. There's two bolts at the bottom, two bolts at the top coming in. Here's the power distribution to the leg plus the uh, power distribution to the individual motors. You've also got a distribution panel right here which is for all the various uh, sensors associated with the robot. Interior is kind of messy. If we go inside a little bit here, you can see there's one of the motors. Uh, that is actually a swing motor for one of the other items. You can see these are, it's kind of busy in here with all the distribution. Up here on the top hanging there is a 12 volt 5 volt uh, power inverter. This is what actually powers the computer systems. And as you see everything kind of has got connectors associated with it so that it can be uh, it's very modular. The next section on top of the main body is actually kind of is the computer section, but it's actually divided up into three separate layers. One layer is right here. This is a piece of plexiglass goes all the way around, 12 sides, and behind these are um, RGB LEDs. Each one of these sides has got two RGB LEDs associated with it. So with 12 sides, that's 24 RGB LEDs. 
Uh, each leg has got four assigned to them and they're used for troubleshooting. This is the actual uh, computer layout, uh, the computer layer right here. I'll take the lid off here in a minute. And then there's the top and this ball right here is more than just decorative. Inside this ball, which uh, is not installed yet, will be a LIDAR unit. Uh, very similar to this one right here. This is probably going to be the one that goes in. That's mounted on a uh, rotate and yaw system. There will also be any cameras that I want to put in will go in there too. This bolts on right now. We can take it back, take it off, and we can see what it looks like underneath. Inside here, it's fairly roomy. With lots of wires. There are going to there are six leg computers. And let's get these things to focus here. There we go. These are RoboPi uh, controllers uh, using a parallel a parallax uh, propeller chip. Very handy. Gave me everything I needed from a connection standpoint. Uh, I especially like the ability just to use standard servo connectors for a lot of the uh, distribution. Makes it a lot easier wiring things up. There's six of these mounted around the peripheral. Uh, and those all feed into a master computer, which is here in the center. Right now, just mounted on a piece of Tupperware. Uh, permit mounting will come once I figure out what I want to do for that. Also uses an XB uh, chip right here, uh, radio uh, for digital control, external, and uh, so there's a lot of room in here for expansion. There'll actually be a, another uh, computer in here that will take care of auxiliary items such as the LIDAR unit when, those, when that gets installed. This here is the radio control that's uh, being used with this. This is a Kickstarter project item that I picked up a while back and is turned out to be very nice. This is uh, a, you actually uses a propeller chip with XB to control itself and with a two line display uh, we've got four uh, joysticks on it, four, uh, four potentiometers, several uh, toggle switches and uh, single push button switches. These are all programmable. There's 32 digital inputs that uh, can be streamed out to the robot and uh, this is be the external control for it. Now we get to the leg itself. There are six legs. Each leg has three motors associated with it. Two of those motors are right here you can see which are the femur motor. This is a linear uh, drive motor with uh, a four inch throw. This here is another linear drive motor that has got a two inch throw. The tibia, uh, and this is for the tibia. Uh, the femur motor right here is actually will lift the leg up and down. Uh, it has a range of 11 inch throw so the robot will change its height by up to 11 inches. Right here the this uh, tibia motor basically causes it to pivot right behind this area right here and causes the leg to tip in and out and the tip, when I'm talking about tip, is the part that actually touches the ground down there. There's a third motor which is mounted internally and here you can see the drivetrain associated with it this motor is used to spin it side to side, and that's called the Coxa motor. So there's three degrees of motion for each one of these. Uh, motion is actually sensed using um, magnetic encoders. There are three of those, one for each axis, one on each either side, and they do that by moving a shaft. And if you look right here, this connector right here goes into the shaft and when this the femur moves up and down like that rotates the shaft. Same thing with on the other side with the um, tibia. 
The Coxa has got a similar setup on it also. Everything here is on bearings, so very smooth movement associated with it. This is all aluminum uh, extrusion, which was then machined with a CNC mill uh, to the specifications um, that, that were tested uh, to get the, it to operate the way I wanted it to. Uh, the aluminum was then anodized. As you see, the black is not paint. This is actually an anodized, a, about a 1,000th of an inch layer. The gold is also anodized. This is uh, just because I wanted to see if I could do a two-tone type setup. And I put uh, gold in several different places. Just kind of spruce it up a little bit. So this is the hardware side of it. There's some internal hardware stuff that isn't very visible. Within this block right here, there is a spring, a 25-pound spring, and uh, mounted on top of here is a switch assembly, which uh, is activated whenever the leg is down and it's got at least 25 pounds worth of uh, weight on it. This is the, how the computer knows that it is, the leg is actually touching the ground, it's got solid footing. It also has the ability right here, this leg actually moves a little bit and what that is, is within here is a sensor that tells when this leg tip is encountering and touching something so that it knows not to try to keep driving if uh, it's got to hit an obstacle. Neither of these two sensors are in place just yet. Uh, right now it's still working on the programming to make the leg work properly. That kind of sums up the mechanical portions of the system. Uh, where we're at right now is right is doing programming for the last couple of years. The programming has turned out to be a little bit more arduous than expected, um, trying to get everything to work exactly the way it needs to work and everything to work the way that it needs to. If you can imagine what I have to do is the tip of this leg has to move along the ground and it has to move along the ground in a fairly straight line depending on which direction the robot is moving any sliding of that tip of that robot uh, could cause some damage to the robot or the uh, the metal associated with this. So using inverse kinematics uh, figured out the uh, formulas needed for this thing to run properly and now it's mostly a lot of tweaking to get this thing to work the way I want it to. Uh, there's a proportional integrate integral derivative control, PID controller, for uh, each one of these motors. Getting those things tuned properly has been taking a little bit of time. Uh, getting closer and closer all the time. Uh, and also then integrating all that together so that into a leg movement that uh, resembles a step and a step in whatever direction I want it to go. Since this does not have a front or a back associated with it, uh, direction control is uh, going to be based on the input that I give it from the uh, radio control system. So uh, 2018 plan is to continue to work and uh, slowly improve the leg movement. Once I get a good solid leg movement on the test leg, which is this leg right here, and it's the ruler on the ground to help me visualize when the leg is moving straight or not and <clears throat> to then start uh, moving that, that program over to the other six legs and get them individually up and running so that we can <clears throat> do the first actual step for the robot. So this has been an overview of the robot's progress over the last few years and uh, kind of give a starting point for 2018. Uh, more things coming in the future. Uh, hopefully I would like to see it make its first step sometime this year. That's the primary goal. So not giving up on it and keeping on working. Bye now.